Sometimes when you're out of ideas, the only idea you need is right here. Literally, because like the whole thing was filmed in this studio and then it just kind of worked out. Hello, welcome to Beyond Board Games. My name is Tim. Today we're taking a look at Tapestry from Stonemaier Games. <sighs> no, that wasn't the fifth time I did that intro. Why was it so hard today? Why? All right, so you know how it goes. Start off first with the setup. Like 90% of all other board games, the very first step is always going to be board goes in the center. So Tapestry has two sides of the board game. The first side is from four to five players as indicated by the symbol here. And it also has a bigger map. The other side is what we're going to set up today. So this one is for one to three players as indicated by the symbol. And also it has a smaller map right in the middle. We have these yellow gear cards called the tech cards. Go ahead and shuffle these and then place three face up to the side of the board. And then next we can shuffle the green tapestry cards and you can put them right next to the tech cards that you just put out. So tapestry has two sets of tiles in the game. One are a set of territory tiles and the other one are space tiles. Go ahead and shuffle these and then you'll put them right next to the tapestry cards too. Oh, what's this? Making sure my OCD lines up perfectly? The funnest part of any board game for me, if you don't already know by now, is always with the miniatures. This is what attracts me to the whole game, right? So here, what you're gonna do is take the miniatures and then line them up with their landmark symbol. So these are all landmarks that tapestry has. You wanna put them all on the landmark board. So for example, the lighthouse is gonna go to the lighthouse token and then so forth. So the game also comes with a green die. This is the science die that's gonna go right above the science track. And then the two red and black dice, these are the ones that I threw very dramatically in the beginning. So these are conquer dice that you're gonna put right above the military track. So that's it for global setup, quick and easy. Next up, we're gonna do player setup. So we're gonna set up for a two player game today. So normally you have these six capital city mats and all you have to do is claim one. But then if you're playing for three players, what you can do is go ahead and match up the numbers that's right at the top of these capital city mats. So like, for example, Tropica here says three. And then, and then on the main board here, you'll see that says three, five, one, six, and two, four. What you can do is just pair up these capital city mats along with the numbers that are listed on the board. So, so actually we'll just do one, six, which is mountain and forest. All you have to do is give one of these pairs to each player and then pick one out of the two. So like between forest and mountain for me, I'll go with the mountain. And then since I picked the mountain, I'm going to take two of these outpost tokens, which are the hexagonal tokens. And then I'm going to place them right on number one on the board. Now in total, you have 10 of the outpost tokens. You're going to put the other eight right above your capital city board. Now next, you're also going to get 16 of these civilization cards. There are a lot of them. All you have to do is give two to each player and then have each player pick one of those. And the remaining are going to go into an unused deck. And then you're going to leave the leftmost slot open, but then fill the remaining five on the right side of the corresponding tokens. So for example, I'm going to put five farms here and the five armories, which are the red ones and so on. You also have four little fun resource tokens. Put four of these on the zero marker on the very bottom of your income track. And now the last part of the setup is you're going to take these player tokens, which are pretty much player cubes. Now these are going to go on the open space on each of the advancement tracks. So you have one on exploration, one on science, one on military, and then one on technology. And then you also have one last cube that goes on the zero point marker of the victory point track, which pretty much outlines the entire board. So that's the setup for tapestry. Now the question is, well, what is tapestry? Now, the idea behind Tapestry is you're pretty much building a civilization that is going to advance in exploration, science, military, and technology. So as you're gaining income and then using that income to advance in these tracks, you're going to gain more abilities and then more resources. Of course, as you're doing that, the whole goal here is to gain as many victory points as you can, as indicated by the tracker along the edge of the board. Enough of that, the whole point of this video is to get you to the table and start playing. So how do you play Tapestry? Okay, so everyone's first turn of the game, we're all doing the same thing, which is collecting income. Now, if you look on your income track, you'll see four different tabs here, and they have a bunch of little numbers to the side of them. All these numbers indicate what your what actions that you're performing during the income turn as you progress through each era. So, since we are in era one, the only action that we're performing is at the very bottom with the little hand symbol, which means you're going to gain income from all exposed slots on the income tracker. So let's see what kind of income we get by looking at all four rows here. We have the yellow resources, which are the coins, and then you also have this lower re symbol, all that means is that you're going to get victory points for each tech card that you have. So we just started and we don't have any tech cards, meaning we don't get anything at all from the coin row. All right, so let's move on to the next one. The gray resources are workers. And again, it says you get victory points for each row and column that you completed in your capital city. But again, we don't have any yet, so we don't get anything here either. So that's yellow and gray. Let's move on over to the right side. 
So now you're looking at the brown food resources, and it says you gain one territory tile from the face down pile, which you flip face up right in front of you. And lastly, in the armory slot, you have the culture resources. So this symbol means you gain one tapestry card, and that's it. That's everyone's first income turn of the game. Now, for the most part, you're only going to do your income phase when you are out of resources. So naturally, everyone may or may not be on the same era, and that's okay. It's part of the game. So that's one action. One action is to do your income turn. The other action is to advance your player token, which you laid out in the four different tracks in the board. Now, advancing is what you're going to be doing for the bulk of the game. So first, you're going to pick one track from the four listed on the board. And then you're going to pay the cost depending on the resources shown under the tier of the track that you are advancing in. And then in order to move, you're just going to put your player token onto the next space and then gain the benefit. So some spaces will have this bonus icon here. This is optional. So for example, you can pay any resource in order to gain a tapestry card here in the expiration track. Okay, so it's my turn. Let's say I want to move on the expiration track. I'm going to go ahead and look at the symbol listed at the top of the tier. Now here, it means I can use any resource in order to advance in expiration. So I'm going to go ahead and use one of the coins to move that from one to zero. And then I'm going to move my cube from this space over here in the expiration side over to the scouting ability. So I just gained the ability to scout, which means I'm going to gain two of the expiration tiles and then place them face up right in front of me. Now that's it. Now it moves on to the next player. And there's no limit to the amount of cubes that you can have listed on each uh, space of the advancement track. Now the game also gives you a reference guide that will explain pretty much every single symbol that's listed on all four of these tracks. But we're going to go over the major symbol that shows up most frequently for each track, starting with the expiration symbol. Now it's super easy. When you explore, you just take one territory tile from your supply and then put it on an empty hex next to a territory that you control. Now the regions where you control or where your outpost tokens are, and since we started at the 1-6 spot, we can put a tile here or here or even here. Now it does matter how you're going to orient the tile. So you want them to match sides because it will give you more victory points and you gain one victory point for every side of the explore tile with at least one aligned terrain. So we have six sides. Okay. So six is the max victory points that you can get. Just ignore the little strip of water here along the edges. All that is is just for looks. The main portion is what matters. So I'll gain one point for the desert matching here, one point for water over here, and another point for water here making a total of three victory points. The game has a total of five different types of terrain being water, desert, grassland, mountain, and forest. So since I just gained three victory points, I'm gonna move my marker over to three. And if you ever go past 100, just put one cube here at 100 and then move your cube again, starting over here at zero. Now, once you keep advancing in the exploration track, you'll eventually reach the space tiles, which will give you a ton of bonuses. But all you do for space tiles is to grab the tile, put it right in front of you, and then gain benefits. You don't align any space tiles together. And but once all these tiles run out, well, that's all the space tiles that you have for the game. Now let's look at one of my favorite ones next, which is the science track. So science is quick. If you see the research symbol, you're just going to roll the science die. Now, depending on what you roll, it will let you advance to that track. So if I roll and get the sword icon, I can advance on the military track. But if there's an X under the green research icon, that means that you can advance, but you don't gain the benefit or the chance to pay for the bonus. You just move to the next space. Now, if there is no X, you'll gain the benefit and a chance to pay for the bonus as well. That's science. Let's move on to track number three, which is technology. Now, this is the invent symbol. So for the technology track, you just gain a tech card from one of the three that we put face up, or you can also grab a new one from the deck. You just replenish the card that you take if you choose from one of the face up cards. And then you're going to put the tech card in the X row of your capital city. Now there's no limit to the number of cards you can have in each row. And the point here is that you move these tech cards up a level and then upgrade it once you reach this yellow arrow up symbol. All you do is move cards from the bottom or middle row up once. And then once it reaches the top row, it can't be upgraded anymore. It's maxed out. But once you upgrade it, now you gain the benefit listed in the circle if it's in the second row or the benefit listed in the square if it is in the top row. The exception is that for the top row, you also have to meet the prerequisite listed on the card as well. So let's take these Zeppelins for instance. You also have to be in tier two or higher in the expiration tab before upgrading the Zeppelins. Now we'll talk about tiers right after we finish the last track. Now speaking of, the last track is the military track. So this is the conquer symbol. To conquer, all you have to do is place an outpost token from your supply onto a territory that has no more than one token on it. And it also has to be adjacent from a region that you control. But since you have two starting this region and they're both upright, you control this region here. So then you can put an outpost in this region since it only has an one outpost so far, but it's still connected to the region that you control. 
Now sometimes you will have different effects that will add a player cube or other tokens on different regions. Now these will still count towards the two limit. You also can't conquer a region you already control because obviously you, you already control it. And the final thing to clarify is that if you have an outpost that is toppled over, you can't conquer this region because one, you no longer control it. And two, you can't add another outpost to this one because there are already two tokens on it. Okay, so you place your outpost region on a tile. Now you're gonna roll the black and red conquer dice. So red for the most part gives you victory points for whichever number that you roll. But if you roll this symbol, it'll give you one point for each region that you control. The black die will give you resources and then this question mark symbol will give you resources for the territory that you just put on an outpost token and conquered. Now later on as this map extends, toppling can happen when you conquer a tile if there's another player on it. So let's say you're trying to conquer another player's tile. Now normally their piece will topple over and then you roll dice. If they have a trap card, which looks like a normal tapestry card, so you can't tell who has one, well now your piece gets toppled instead. But the person attacking will still be able to roll the conquer dice and then gain the benefit instead. Now moving forward on the military track, if you run out of outposts, you can still advance along the military track and then gain benefits, but you just can't conquer any more regions. So those are all four tracks that you can advance on. Sometimes on those tracks, you'll see symbols for income buildings divided by a slash. Now all that means is to just remove one of these buildings from your income board. Now let's talk about buildings in capital cities. Let's say I want to remove an armory from my income board. Now I put it on an empty space on my capital board that doesn't have a red dot. So it's called the capital board because basically it is the birthplace of your civilization and any red dots are filled in spaces where you've already built your territory. So if you ever fill up a three by three square, like one shown here, you can get any resource that you want. You'll also see the symbol at the end of the military track, which means that you get victory points for any rows or columns that are filled in your capital city board. So if I have these filled in, I'll get one point here and then another point here, making a total of two victory points. Now here's where these cool mini landmarks come into play. So these will fill up your spaces even faster. So every advancement track has four tiers broken up by these rectangles. If you are the first player to advance to the next tier, you get a landmark that you can add to your capital city. And then any players that follow you will still get the benefit, but they don't get those landmarks. So when you place your landmarks, just make sure that they're not overlapping with the red circles or with any other buildings that are already in place. So to fix that, you are allowed to extend your landmark beyond your capital city, just like this. So remember the extra buildings that we had aside from the ones that are placed on the landmarks? Those are used for technology cars as they're being upgraded. So some tech cars will give you bonus landmarks. So let's recap everything real quick so everything's in our head as we progress forward. Everyone collects income on their first turn. And they're going to begin era one by looking at their exposed slots on their income board. So here, I'm gonna gain one of each and then move these four markers up one space. I also gain one territory tile and one tapestry card. So everyone's gonna collect their income and then it comes back to me. Now that I have enough resources, well, what am I gonna do with it? Well, I'm gonna spend it by advancing in one of the four tracks by paying the cost listed above each tier. If I want to explore, I pay one of any resource listed above the tier and then get a territory tile oriented on the board and then score victory points for each matching side and then gain the benefit that is on the tile. When you get to the final tier, ooh, that sounds dramatic, the final tier. So when you get towards the end, now you have the options of getting space tiles. So go ahead and grab one from the face down pile, slap that face up in front of you, and then gain all the resources listed there. Done and done. Let's talk about science. Pay the tier cost, roll the die, and then advance in any other track. You gain benefits if there is no X, but if there is an X, then you don't gain that benefit or the option of paying for the bonus. Technology, get a tech card, put it right in front of your capital city on the bottom. Once you hit the yellow up arrow on the track, that's when you can upgrade the tech and then gain the benefit listed in that icon. All you have to do is just make sure that for the third tier, you also, on top of upgrading, meet the prerequisite that is listed on the tech card. And then you gain the benefits listed in the square. And the military, remember for this one, you're putting an outpost token on an adjacent region with no more than one token on it. And then just roll the conquer dice, gain victory points for red, resources for black. If you gain buildings, that's when you put them on your capital city board, make sure that it's not on the red dot. Get victory points for each completed row and column. Use landmarks that you get from being the first to advance from any tier to fill up more slots faster than usual. Again, making sure that you don't overlap on red and you can also extend outside of the capital city. Now on the board, it also lists three achievements that you can earn. If you're the first person to gain that achievement, put your marker on the highest victory point slot and then the following player will gain the next one. And then the following player will earn the next one and you cannot earn the same achievement twice. Now moving past the first era onto the second through fifth eras. So we finished advancing until we ran out of resources completely. 
Now it's time for another income turn, but this time we're going to take a full income turn. So it's going to be different for each player, so not everyone's going to be in the same era or income turn. Let's say that you're now starting your second era. I remember the four things that we skipped on the first era, so let's go ahead and cover that now. Now the first one is to activate civilization abilities, if that is applicable. So just read over each one because each one is different. Some will activate now, some will give you access to another civilization, and so on. It all depends on what you have. The second one is to play a tapestry card on the leftmost blank of your... The second one is to play a tapestry card on the leftmost blank space on your income mat from your hand. And if for whatever reason, if you, and if for whatever reason you don't have a tapestry card, just put the top card of the tapestry deck face down on your income mat. And if you're the first person to reach the new era, you also get the bonus right underneath it. So here it says to gain one of any resource right after you finished the Maker of Fire. So for these tapestry cards, it'll either say this era, which means it lasts until the beginning of the following income phase, or it'll say when played, which means it activates now. Now the third one means you can upgrade one tech card and then gain victory points for each exposed victory point icon on your income mat. So here I would gain one point for each tech card that I have, which would be three points, but I still have two other exposed slots. So now I triple that and I gain nine points, nine flipping points. But you get victory points for all exposed slots, so it's not just tech, you still count anything with the symbol across all other tracks. And finally, let's talk about end game conditions. Now, once you take your fifth income turn, you only activate your civilization's ability, upgrade tech if you want to, and then score victory points for the exposed slots. You can't gain anything else after this except from passive abilities on your civilization turn. You can't gain anything else after this except from passive abilities on your civilization board. The winner is the one with the most victory points, of course, after everyone finishes their final income turn. Now, if there's a tie, the one with the most resources win. Double ties or anything beyond that means you share the victory aka everyone loses however you want to interpret it so that is tapestry hope you enjoyed the b-roll now on my next segment video whatever you want to call it i'm going to break it down and see how you can make your own introductory sequence or b-roll video and try to give some really helpful tips and tricks that you can do in order to upgrade your videos a little bit but if you enjoyed the video overall i would love to have your support please subscribe to my channel follow me on social media especially instagram that's the one i'm most active about so you'll see what i'm doing on a day-to-day -day basis but other than that i'll see you guys soon